Welcome back to Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm your host, Brad Wilder. Today on the show, Dr. Michelle Cretella is here. She's a pediatrician, writer, researcher, and speaker. She is a consultant and contributor to the Rhode Island Family Institute and is the advisory board spokesperson who, for advocates protecting children. She served as the first executive director of the American College of Pediatricians from 2018 through 2021 as well. And prior to being hired as an executive director, she was elected to the Advocates Protecting Children Board of Directors back in 2005 and was elected to four terms, each as vice president, and in 2010 and president in 2014. With that, I'd like to bring in John and Dr. Ann and, uh, of course, our guest, Dr. Cotella. Brad, thank you as always. And Dr. Ann Gillies, I'm so pleased that you are now our co-host, and we're both very grateful and excited to continue this conversation with Dr. Cotella. Absolutely. And we're going to start this section uh, talking about genetics, I think, um, Dr. Cotella. You have a background in this area, so it's really going to be exciting to hear what you have to say uh, on this issue as born that way or in the wrong body. This is one of the things that uh, we hear often that the children are trapped in the wrong body or they have a girl brain or a boy brain, uh, which is opposite to their actual sex. So what do you what do you think about that? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the general public is being led to believe that it's scientifically possible to be trapped in the wrong body. This is a complete myth. From a developmental standpoint, you know, child developmental standpoint, you know, you look at puberty as the time where the brain actually is recalibrating itself. It's like your uh, 13 year old is like your typical two year old. And I'm not suggesting the age, but you know how a, a two year old just goes through this uh, incredible uh, growth spurt right. mentally, right? Yes. All of the brain. Um, and you can talk to that a little bit more, but but the same thing happens in puberty. And so if we are, are suppressing puberty, this is my question. Are we not then um, damaging these children for life? Because if they don't go through puberty, because then they won't go through puberty at all. So not only biologically, physically, are they uh, stagnated, but but intellectually, it would seem to me that there are, are long-term negative neurological effects that are going to be happening to these children. And, and to think that this is happening on our watch, uh, I mean, this is just devastating. And there's going to be time I think these children are going to come back. And we're seeing that. We actually have a new case in Canada right now. The uh, young woman lives about an hour and a half from me, and she is suing the doctors um because she has uh detransitioned and to her ref she went through the whole uh sterilization like the medicalization mm -hmm. and so it devastated her whole life it, it devastates their life so uh, thank you for sharing that and anything else on neuro neurological effects i'd love to hear um what your thoughts are developmentally um what you said is is very critical. Okay, puberty is not a disease. Puberty is a critical time period of physical, emotional, social, uh, and cognitive, as well as spiritual development. I mean, between, uh, let's say, age 12 and 25, the brain is undergoing rapid growth, incredibly rapid growth and, and maturation um, and, and organization that is directed by the sex hormones and um you're right when we arrest we, we put we arrest puberty we arrest normal puberty that child is going to be hampered and robbed of normal development and it, it and even if they come off those blockers two months later two years later they have lost a time period of normal development. Um, and unfortunately, we know from at least five studies now that virtually 100% of kids who are put on the puberty blockers, 95 to 100% of them stay on them and, and also go on to claim a transgender identity 
and take the cross sex hormones. And we know that as an example, because the other side always says, oh, it doesn't matter. We give them the cross sex hormones and they just go through the opposite sex puberty. If that were true, their bone density would be normal. It is not. So we are definitely harming these children um, for life. We're altering, we are altering their chance at a at normal development. We're robbing them of that opportunity for normal development. Dr. Kellen, um, let me ask, I'm gonna have you repeat that. This, this is the message. Okay, people will claim we're anti this or anti we're not anti anything other than that which would harm or endanger vulnerable women and children, including genuinely vulnerable men, because there are young boys, and that's the travesty of this, young boys that are being uh, recruited into this, uh, brainwashed into this, manipulated emotionally and mentally, just as girls, more girls now. Uh, but the, the key for parents to take away, in my estimation, uh, from this first episode, if you would be so good, we're going, you know, the time, time is always our nemesis on this program. Mm -hmm. If you would be so good, we will continue on with the second part of this. But I really want parents and others to understand, and again, we're not anti anything, we are pro raising the bar and the protection of women and children in all facets. But since we're talking about young people, that are being impacted by this medically, the medicalization of kids. Again, would you repeat for us as former head of uh, president of the American College of Pediatrics, you've been a physician, a pediatrician for years, that if you medicalize kids, if you give them puberty blockers, you are going to be damaging them significantly. Is that an understatement? Absolutely. Yes, you, you absolutely. Puberty is not a disease. Puberty is a critical time of development physically, emotionally, cognitively, and spiritually. It, it is a critical, critical time of maturation. And we are robbing children of this critical, normal period of development. Therefore, they cannot help but be damaged. It is true. And we know for a fact that puberty blockers can predispose to new mental illness, that package insert says it leads to anxiety, it exacerbates uh, labile emotions. We have demonstrated already in studies that these children do not develop a normal, their normal bone density. And we know from what Lupron does as a side effect in men and women, that it impairs memory. And there's at least one case study of a little boy who did lose many IQ points. This, this is a horrible, horrible criminal experiment on our children. And what makes it criminal is that when you combine the puberty blockers with cross-sex hormones, you are sterilizing them. And as I said before, that's not helpful or caring. It's an atrocity, it's eugenics. Dr. Ann, you had one additional question. We've got about three minutes left on this segment. Go ahead and ask the question th that you had for Dr. Christian. Well, I think the question I have, I'm going to keep till the next one because I, I want um, Dr. Fratella to flesh it out a little bit. But, you know, um, we're going to talk about uh, affirmation therapy and all of those things. But thank you for clarifying the neurological. I think we'll touch a little bit more on that uh, and talk a little bit more in the next session. I want to talk about... Um, testosterone testosterone and estrogen uh, so when we talk about cross-sex hormones and the effects mm -hmm. that they have i'm really looking forward to picking your brain on that one as we begin to wrap this one up i have a quick question of my own and we have a couple of minutes here that might be a good time to pop this in there um dr Catella, do you see any accountability going forward for the people who are harming these children i think our best chance at accountability will come um in the form of uh, the state, uh, various state legislatures are passing um, what are called Vulnerable Child Protection Acts. Now, many of them include um, a very long uh, time period in which young people who were transitioned 
will be able to sue their physicians should they should those young people come out of it and detransition. Um, sadly, in America, that seems to be the you know money is what talks. Um, some of these bills, many of these bills, I think, also um, they they ban transgender interventions in minors and state that any doctors who perform them despite the law uh, will be brought up before the um, the medical board uh, at, and risk losing their license. The problem is that medical medical boards, most of them are quite um, leftist and on board with the LGBT agenda and big pharma, big medicine agenda. So the likelihood of a physician or nurse practitioner losing their license is low. But, and we are starting to see lawsuits now in the US, they're starting to be filed. Um, once the lawsuits come, that's that's what's going to force these activist surgeons and activist um, doctors to- we, We've seen take- an uprising in abortion clinics being you know, obviously attacked. Um, are we going to see that sort of future as well with regards to these doctors and their facilities going forward? Um, I don't see, I don't see that because, um, the, although this issue is those of us who are fighting for vulnerable children and women, um, we do span the political spectrum. We're both conservative and liberal. Uh, but I would say we are not the type to lash out violently. Those who are lashing out at the pregnancy centers are your real hardcore Marxists. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't see hardcore Marxists joining us, although... I have worked with many radical feminists, so I, I don't think we would see that. But I do I do foresee more lawsuits being filed against hospital systems, individual physicians, and that will have an impact. Well, Dr. Critella, thank you. We're going to hold you over, as it were, under the, um, the next uh, episode. And we have a lot to cover, including one of the things that will inevitably come up in this discussion is about supposedly children being born in the wrong body. And what about intersex and you being yeah. a physician, you're going to be in a prime position to help us understand the reality of that. Dr. Dr. Cretella, thank you. Dr. Ann Gillies, thank you. And Brad, we look forward to picking it up at this point on part two. Thank you, everyone. This is Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm your host, Brad Wilder. Thanks for tuning in. Part two is going to be extremely entertaining as well with a bunch of information that you're going to want to know as a parent or grandparent as this ideology of the trans movement continues across North America. We'll see you soon.